China is well on its way to becoming a full-blown dictatorship. Some would argue that it is already there. It started earlier this year in March, when President of the People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping, successfully removed presidential term limits. This means that in theory, he can be president for life, something that all dictators strive for. As soon as term limits were abolished, the development of the social credit system was ramped up. The social credit system involves using a complex array of cameras, mobile phone apps, and artificial intelligence to monitor individuals' behaviour. The intention is for every person to be ranked using a points system. A person with the maximum of 800 points is considered to be a perfect citizen, one that lives and breathes the core socialist values of patriotism, dedication, integrity, and friendship. There are many benefits to having a high score. Your children are allowed to attend the best schools and universities, you no longer have to provide a deposit when renting a car, and will find it easier to get a mortgage or sell things online. If you're one of the unlucky few to have zero points, then you are considered an enemy of the state, and not worthy of living in the communist paradise that is China. People with low scores are not able to purchase plane tickets or ride on high-speed trains. They'll find it hard to rent a house or to get a mortgage or even to find love. Some of the biggest Chinese matchmaking websites are already publishing their users' social credit scores. Xi Jinping claims to have only one goal in mind, the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation also known as the Chinese dream. With regards to the party, he stated, Government, military, society, education, north, south, east, west, the party leads everything. He enshrines the core socialist national values of prosperity, democracy, civility, and harmony, and espouses the core social values of freedom, equality, justice, and the rule of law. It sounds like a passage taken straight from the dictator's handbook. Of course, in reality, we all know that the Chinese Communist Party is the very antithesis of democracy. The core values of freedom, justice, equality, and harmony have clearly been put in there as some sort of inside joke. How can anybody claim that executing your political rivals is justice? How can anybody claim that imprisoning journalists is freedom? Young women working back-breaking jobs for very little money who end up retiring at 22 with a disability due to the illegal chemicals being used in the factory? How can anybody call that equality? Falsely imprisoning or executing witnesses to crimes because they can't afford to pay the bribe? How can anybody call that the rule of law? The Chinese system has nothing to do with freedom. It has nothing to do with equality or democracy or any other word that the party decide to use. The only two words that accurately describe the party's intentions are power and control. They're the only two things that the party care about. Everything else is secondary. In the northwest province of Xinjiang, over a million Uyghurs have been detained in so-called re-education camps. The Uyghur are a Turkic ethnic minority that practice the Islamic faith. They clearly don't want to be under Chinese rule, and the Chinese Communist Party knows this. However, Xinjiang is home to the highest concentration of fossil fuel reserves of any region in China, so the CCP are not going to let it go without a fight. There are police stations on almost every corner. There are regular shows of force with armed and armoured police marching down the street. While the Communist Party officially guarantees freedom of religion, the reality couldn't be further from the truth. Uyghur men are not allowed to wear abnormal beards, whatever that means. Uyghur women who cover their faces must be immediately reported to the police. Refusal to watch or listen to official state media is a crime. Uyghur children must attend official state-sanctioned schools or their families face severe punishment. When it comes to the social credit system in Xinjiang, there are only three levels. If you're an ethnic Han Chinese, your starting level is trustworthy. If you're a Uyghur, you are automatically ranked as average. If you're a Uyghur and break any of the arbitrary rules, you are immediately moved to the lowest rank of untrustworthy. Untrustworthy people are typically locked up in re-education camps with only minimal access to food and almost no access to clean water. It's Nazi Germany all over again. Of course, the Chinese government deny all of this. They claim that everyone in China has the same rights as everybody else. 
By 2020, the social credit system will be in full swing. Every city in China will be monitoring their citizens for abnormal or erratic behaviour. If you cross the road where you shouldn't, you'll lose some points. If you buy too much alcohol, a sign of dependence, you'll lose some points. However, if you buy some nappies, you might just gain some points, because it means that you're showing responsibility. My wife, being Chinese herself, predicts that rich Chinese will find a way to game the system. They'll pay people to make false purchases on their behalf, or attend volunteer meetings in order to fraudulently raise their points. Ultimately, the system will probably only benefit the rich, and punish the poor. A fitting motto for the social credit system might be, conform or die, because that's pretty much exactly what it comes down to. Either accept your communist masters, or forever be labelled a ne'er-do-well. The Chinese government have been forever trying to manipulate Chinese society. In 1979, they introduced the one-child policy in order to curb an expanding population after the Cultural Revolution. However, it has had unwanted consequences. Now, there are a growing number of pension-aged Chinese with a shrinking number of people in the workforce to support them. Traditionally, children are expected to look after their elderly parents, but with only one child, this has become quite difficult. Luckily, the one-child policy was scrapped in 2016 and converted to a two-child policy, but people continue to have only one child due to rising costs of living and education. Be careful what you wish for, it might just come true. Recent articles indicate that the Chinese government may be considering scrapping the family planning policies altogether. See the link to the article below. China shuts family planning watchdogs, hinting at an end to limits on child numbers. It seems like China is in a constant battle with itself in trying to create the ever-elusive, perfect society. I don't mean to be so harsh on China. Well, actually I do. But it's not the Chinese people that I have a gripe with. It's their government. The CCP have power on their minds and are not willing to give it up without a fight. Realistically, I know there's nothing that we, or any other Western nation can do to stop them. The only people that can bring down the ever-expanding Chinese dictatorship are the Chinese people. Maybe the recent social credit system will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Maybe the CCP have gone one step too far. Whatever happens with China, we have to take heed. Even in Australia, the government have been installing cameras made primarily by two Chinese companies, Hikvision and Da Hua. They both have a history of spying on behalf of the Chinese government. One such camera was installed outside a sensitive Australian military base, the RAAF Base Edinburgh in Adelaide. It has since been removed. Another was installed outside the Canberra office complex that houses the Australian government's top lawyers, two federal departments focused on national security, and an Australian intelligence agency, the Office of National Assessments. Hikvision and Da Hua have both been banned by the United States government. In May, Hikvision released a promotional video of their surveillance cameras in action, where they correctly classified a man as an ethnic minority. It's scary stuff. So as I said before, we can't just ignore China. Although their initial goal might be to keep their domestic population under control, certainly their grand plan is to become the next global superpower. With a focus on surveillance, artificial intelligence, and an ever-expanding military, it might not be too long until Australia doesn't feel so powerful anymore. Take heed, Big Brother China is watching.